So recently I have come up with the new idea to rank every episode of Spongebob into individual videos. The reason for this is because I never really liked my ranking of every Spongebob episode of each season. I felt like I couldn't get my full thoughts on episodes because I did not want to drag the video out for too long. But now, with my new way of ranking, I can give my full thoughts and opinions in each episode. I will be going in chronological order, and the first episode is Help Wanted. Help Wanted is a name every Spongebob fan knows by heart. The plot is simple, yet a good introduction to the never-ending series that is Spongebob Squarepants. It's pretty basic, all things considered. Spongebob wants to get a job as a fry cook at the Krusty Krab. But Mr. Krabs does not think he's capable of the job until Spongebob proves to him that he is by feeding all the anchovies. The plot itself is pretty basic, but that's the point, as it is more of a way to introduce all the characters in the show. Nevertheless, it was still a decent introduction to the show, all things considered. Giving the average viewer a good idea of what each character's personality trait is supposed to be. In terms of humor, season 1 as a whole didn't have the strongest sense of it as I feel like it was more focused on the plot in some episodes where it felt like they were not trying as hard on the humor. But in all honesty, the episode didn't really need humor as it still kept my attention throughout the entire thing and I'd rather have a good episode trying not to be funny than a bad episode trying to be funny. Season 1 feels like more of a season where you can vibe to rather than laugh at it, and honestly, it's not a bad thing for me, and the episode is definitely a good example of how it shows. In terms of my favorite moments, I like the parts where Patrick is giving motivation to Spongebob, because at that time his character wasn't flanderized to just being a dumb, stupid moron, but a friend who was not the brightest, but still a good friend to our main sponge. My other favorite moment was Spongebob cooking up the Krusty Krab Krabby Patties to the Tiny Tim tune as it felt relaxing to see something basic yet still enjoyable to watch at the same time. Hope Wanted was a good start to the show and in terms of ratings I would give it an 8 out of 10 and of course it would rank the highest on my list being it is the first episode of course. Hey everyone, I'm back with my next review of Spongebob, and this one is Reef Blower, the second episode of Spongebob. Reef Blower, as many of you may know, is the only Spongebob episode without any dialogue. The plot of this episode is that Squidward kicks a piece of shell on Spongebob's yard, and Spongebob tries to use a Reef Blower to get it off, but things start to escalate quickly. Due to this episode having no dialogue, everything in this episode must rely on slapstick humor. I don't really have too much to say about this episode as I do others due to it being a very short episode and nothing really going on outside of the slapstick humor. Even so, this episode is still pretty creative for its time and the limited amount of things they can do here. My favorite moment is probably the end where Spongebob brings all the water back from the reef blower or the part where he says you in the subtitles, but if I'm being honest, this entire episode didn't really get much out of me. That still doesn't take away with what they were trying to do, but for me, this episode isn't that, that funny or engaging. But hey, it's only a minute long or so, so it doesn't really do anything wrong for me. I would give this episode a solid 5 out of 10. It's definitely going under Hope Wanted as that episode has something outside of slapstick humor. But yeah. Hey everyone, I'm back with my next review of Spongebob in the first video of this new year. And this time I will be reviewing Tea at the Tree Dome, as it is the next episode chronologically. As basically all of you may know, this is the first episode that introduces the returning character Sandy Cheeks. The episode's plot revolves around Spongebob meeting a squirrel from land. And once invited to her tree dome, he soon realizes that he can't breathe air and has to try and find a solution around it. In my opinion, this episode gives Sandy a good introduction as it shows all our main character traits being smart, liking karate, and very southern. This episode feels like the first 
SpongeBob episode that truly had a good comedic like, jokes, as there were many that stuck out to me, such as, I don't need it. What kind of place is this? And Pinky's up. Tea at the Tree Dome is a nice, not completely over top the top way to introduce a character. In terms of how this episode compares with the others, I'd put it at the top of the list so far, giving it an 8 out of 10, because like I said, this episode feels like the first attempt at actual humor in the show and focuses on a plot that is pretty engaging. It feels like a step in the right direction in terms of how the show will go on in the future. Yo, I'm back with my next Spongebob review, which is Bubble Stand. In this episode, Spongebob builds a stand where he teaches people how to blow bubbles. Okay, by that description, this episode may sound dull, but in reality it is quite the opposite of that due to how easily this is one of the funniest episodes in all of the show's history, and that's saying a lot. The story itself isn't anything special as they stay in the same place for the entire episode. The humor truly carries this episode through everything with how simple, yet still being quite humorous. With things such as Squidward playing his clarinet horribly to Patrick calling the elephant a giraffe to Spongebob's technique about blowing bubbles. I always remember laughing at this episode when I was younger, even after watching it many times. In my opinion, this episode truly set the pace for how humor in Spongebob episodes would soon become. It seems as though the shoe has truly found its footing and would soon become the phenomenon it will be. So far, I would put this at the top of my list, giving it a rating of 9 out of 10. Bubble Stand is a pretty entertaining episode. As of right now, I feel as if most of my reviews have not been that controversial until now, as I think this episode is overrated. I still like the episode nonetheless, but I just don't think it reaches top 5 season 1 episodes like most others. Don't get me wrong, I think this episode has its moments, like the Rip Pants song itself, and the message it gives is actually one that I appreciate about a joke being overused as I think the moral is pretty relevant to this day, because I think it should be expressed more to many people who use the same overused joke such as the Ohio joke. The reason I think this episode is overrated is because the ripped pants joke was annoying from the start, and the part where he pretended to drown I thought was over exaggerated by Spongebob to go that far. Again, I think that it was the point, but still, it's not my type of humor, which I get people can't accept, but again, it's my opinion, so feel free to tell me how my opinion isn't right in the comments. But anyways, back to the episode. Overall, I think this episode is good. I'd give it a solid 7 out of 10 under Help Wanted, but above Reef Blower as of now. The intention of the episode is good, and I truly think that the moral is a really good one and should be expressed more to this day as the internet starts to get more evolved. But it's one of those episodes I respect more than I actually like compared to the previous. I didn't really laugh and the plot didn't engage me that much, but I can't help but respect that what the writers were trying to do here, which I can't help but gloss over. Also, the song's melody is truly amazing. Alright, so everyone probably knows the most infamous trend of Spongebob, which is torturing Squidward for no reason other than he is just Squidward and has to have everything wrong happen to him. Well, this was the episode that Pyre needed. What's up guys, it's Gary back again, and as you can see, I am reviewing the Spongebob episode known as Jellyfishing. Jellyfishing is about Squidward not wanting to go jellyfishing with Spongebob and Patrick, but ends up getting injured and then Spongebob and Patrick force him to jellyfish with them, as Squidward can't really do anything. Yeah, by that description, you can already tell I'm not a big fan of the, this episode. Nowadays, I usually try not to get too tempered with Spongebob episodes and I still won't. 
But what I will say is that this episode annoyed me pretty heavily as Squidward didn't do anything wrong, but for some reason gets constantly beat down at lazy attempts for humor. Speaking of humor, it's the only part that carries this episode as the plot is horribly written, so jokes such as firmly grasp it don't make it too terrible. Another thing that makes this a little better is that Spongebob and Patrick actually have something happen to them in the end unlike future episodes. Still, those few things don't want me to give this episode a higher rating than 4 out of 10. I didn't flat out hate the episode, I just thought it was mediocre at best. But hey, if this is the bottom of the barrel, I think Spongebob Season 1's off to a pretty good start. Okay, so as we all know, every show always has its protagonist and its antagonist. This episode introduces the main antagonist of the show that will be used for the same plot point for many years to come, Plankton. We all know Plankton, the main rival of Mr. Krabs who always tries to steal the secret formula, a plot point that is seen a lot in the future. Quick side note, but this is actually the first episode where the Krusty Krab is back, which is pretty nice to see not seeing it in every episode. On track though, this episode is about Plankton's first introduced plot to steal the secret formula by controlling Spongebob. Ultimately, of course, the plan ends up failing due to Plankton's own foolishness, but in the future this happens a lot more often. In terms of the actual episode, it's not the most amazing thing of course, but it is still a serviceable episode and a good introduction to the mainstay character. One thing I want to point out, however, is that Spongebob breaks into Squidward's house and his bedroom is on the first floor, which I'm pretty sure only happens in this episode. Other than that, I would give this episode a solid 7 out of 10, putting it above Reef Blower by a good margin, but under Ripped Pants by only a little bit. Crazy how a show which at the time was new already has so many well-known episodes just from how good they are. You don't see that often. Okay, so one thing I like about Season 1 so far is how simple these episode plots are, and yet still manage to be good in a simple manner. Naughty Nautical Neighbors is a perfect example of what I'm talking about. The episode's plot is that Spongebob and Patrick end up hating each other because Squidward caused some commotion between one of their games. The episode is one of the most basic cartoon tropes and yet still manages to entertain me. This is because the episode actually does the trope well. Squidward causing Patrick and Spongebob to split apart and then in the end having to bring them back together for being too annoying sounds boring in concept, but when actually executed, works pretty well. Another thing is that the jokes in this episode had some memorable parts such as Spongebob playing the bassinet horribly and Patrick sleeping during E minor. Overall, I think this episode all around is in a good example of a good season 1 episode. Pretty simple and not over the top, but still managing to get the entertainment part down. I'll give this episode a 7 out of 10, right above Plankton, but under Ripped Pants. With many Spongebob trends being introduced in Season 1, this episode not only brought one but two trends along one being of course spongebob always failing his boating test and the other more importantly being the my leg gag but in all seriousness this episode's plot revolves around of course spongebob going to get his boating license unsurprisingly he fails and due to this disappointment patrick helps him cheat in his next attempt but in the end spongebob confesses that he cheated and failed anyway this episode introduces Mrs. Puff, a mainstay character in the Goofy Kitchen Appliances Adventures. In terms of the actual episode itself, the plot is pretty basic. I mean, after seeing so many of this type of plot, it's bound to get old. And unlike Plankton, the episode, this plot didn't keep me engaged throughout the entire thing. 
The humor is also pretty basic with some jokes being good like act natural. Even so, I'm going to give this episode a 6 out of 10 being above Reef Blower but under Plankton. Alright, here we have it. Everyone's favorite season 1 episode. For good reason, too. So what is this episode about if it's so good? Well, basically, in a nutshell, Spongebob and Squidward are tasked with delivering a pizza after Mr. Krabs gets a request to do so. When they do so, they end up getting lost and have to go on a wacky adventure to deliver the pizza right around the corner. The idea of this alone sounds amazing, Spongebob and Squidward alone on an adventure together. And of course it does work as can be seen by the amount of notoriety that this episode has. You probably have heard about why this episode works so well, because everyone has praised this episode. So why do I think this episode works well? Well for starters, the episode's plot construction and how beautifully executed the episode is with the ending, but we'll get to the ending later. We'll of course start with the adventure. This part is always remembered for its iconic moments such as the Krusty Krab Pizza song and the Spongebob dancing on the road with his hat like the pioneers did. Also, the way Spongebob always has a positive attitude throughout the entire journey while Squidward contrasts this by always being negative and more realistic really shows off the well-known dynamic that these two have with, of course, Spongebob representing childhood and Squidward representing adulthood. However, with all this said, it's moments like these that make a Spongebob episode amazing, but it's moments like the ending of this episode that separate the amazing from the most iconic and memorable. The ending of this episode is by far, if not one of my favorite endings to the entire show as a whole. So, what is this ending exactly? Well, what happens is that when Spongebob and Squidward finally arrive at the house they are delivering to, the guy that asked for the pizza ends up getting angry and yelling at Spongebob for a mistake he made about not getting his Dr. Kelp. What happens next is that Spongebob ends up crying and you can feel the emotion inside of him as his hope of satisfying a customer was crushed. It's like when you try and work so hard to achieve something only for it to come tumbling down into ruin. That is the emotion felt by Spongebob all because of a douchebag character made a mistake on his behalf. Luckily though, this broke Squidward into a state of anger just like the audience and he ended up taking the pizza and smashing it in the customer's face like any rational person would do after seeing their co-worker get yelled at for seemingly nothing. The reason why people remembered truly memorable episodes such as these is because of stuff like this. Well, yes, this show is meant to be funny. I mean, that's what cartoons are for. It's truly great writing like this that helps a viewer continue watching the show even after growing up. Squidward genuinely feeling sympathetic towards Spongebob and the way he was treated is something we won't see in the modern days, not just in Spongebob. While yes, the rest of this episode is really amazing with memorable moments, it's the ending of this episode that really makes the episode go down as many people's not just favorite season 1 episode, but favorite episode of all time. The, this episode easily gets a well earned 10 out of 10 well above bubble stand, but is it my favorite episode of the season or show? I guess we'll have to wait and see. Hey guys, it's Gary, back again with another review. If you couldn't tell by the title and image somehow, I'm going to be reviewing Home Sweet Pineapple, the next episode chronologically. What happens in this episode is that nematodes end up sucking Spongebob's house and he ends up having to find a new house to stay in. What happens in the end is that he grows his house back with another pineapple seed and everything is fine and peachy again. My favorite part of this episode has to be when Spongebob and Patrick try to build a new house and Patrick is constantly getting hurt. I don't know why I find that part funny, but I just do for some reason. Also the part with Squidward kicking Spongebob out when he tries to sleep over was also pretty funny. Other than that, I found the story itself to be pretty alright. I think that it worked well enough to make the episode good to watch. 
This episode fits well with the rest of season one, where it doesn't try to be over the top, but rather just a chiller yet somehow still comedic episode. Overall, I would give this episode a 7 out of 10, putting it above Boating School but under Plankton the episode. I think this episode has a good balance of story and jokes to put it with the rest of the season 1 episodes. I'm back with my next Spongebob review and today I'll be reviewing pickles. What happens in this episode is that Spongebob apparently messes up an order that was given by Bubble Bass, the pickiest eater in town. When Spongebob messes up this order due to forgetting the pickles, this causes him to go into a paranoia where he forgets how to make a Krabby Patty and he also forgets how to do other basic necessities. Mr. Krabs ends up having to help Spongebob remember how to make one, and when Bubble Bass comes back, it turns out he was hiding the pickles under his tongue and everything goes back to normal. I'm going to start off by saying that I really like this episode. Whilst it isn't my favorite of the season, I still love every bit of this episode. Let's start off with the beginning where Squidward takes orders from the customers. I love this section of the episode due to how comedic Squidward is, and his complete negativity towards the customers, with the best part being when he says, We serve food here, sir, to Bubble Bass. The rest of the episode is also pretty good, with the middle being about Spongebob's struggle to get over his mistake. During this, Squidward takes over and burns all the food, including some guy's shake, which is my personal favorite line of the episode. But back to Spongebob, Mr. Krabs ends up having to help him figure out how to make a Krabby Patty again, and when he does, he goes back to show Bubble Bass who's the best fry cook. In the end, it turns out Bubble Bass was hiding the pickles under his tongue and gets run out by everyone in the town, and then they all cheer for Spongebob and boo for Squidward, with another classic line being, BOO! YOU STINK! The reason for me liking this episode so much is because of how, just like pizza delivery, it has good humor whilst also tying in a good story. While I do like Pizza Delivery more, I still think Pickles is a really good episode with the story making the viewer feel sympathy for Spongebob as his entire life was ruined by one silly mistake that wasn't even his fault. Overall, this episode gets a solid 9 out of 10 going above Bubble Stand but below Pizza Delivery. And we're back at Mrs. Puff's Boating School with the next episode, Hall Monitor. First off, before I get any further, why does a boating school with one classroom for most of the episodes have a hall monitor? 
But besides this, this episode is another good one for season one. What happens is that Mrs. Puff has to decide on a hall monitor for the day, and SpongeBob was the last person to go, so he gets hall monitor. This ends up being a disaster as what SpongeBob thinks is good deeds ends up ruining the town, and he becomes a wanted felon in the town. In the end, they catch SpongeBob, and Mrs. Puff is arrested because, of course, as it is a common theme of the show going forward. Besides Mrs. Puff getting arrested, however, this episode was good. We start with the start, which isn't much to be fair, but it helps build the beginning of the episode. Same with the middle, as it is about the same as the beginning where it just helps build up to the climax, so nothing really special going around there. The climax is truly the good part with Spongebob and Patrick trying to figure out who the maniac is, not realizing it's Spongebob, and them trying their best to go around. The night part is the best however, with Patrick being scared when seeing the maniac, not knowing it's Spongebob, and Spongebob trying to avoid what is actually himself. Overall, this episode is good, about average for a season 1 episode, which is why I'm giving it a 7 out of 10, putting it above Home Sweet Pineapple but below Plankton. Another day, another Spongebob rating, and today I'll be reviewing the episode Jellyfish Jam. What happens in this episode is that Spongebob ends up taking a jellyfish home with him. The jellyfish ends up wanting to party all day and night while also attracting a bunch of other jellyfish into Spongebob's house and Spongebob ends up having to kick everyone out by making music with Gary and everything ends well again. This episode is well known for the stadium rave song that is played in the episode. Other than that, I don't care much for this episode. It's one of those I don't like but don't dislike either. It's just pretty alright to be honest. The beginning starts off with Spongebob having fun with the jellyfish in the beginning. And this part is pretty much nothing other than what I just described. The middle of this episode was also pretty much a nothing burger. With Spongebob realizing that the jellyfish are too much trouble and... He has to figure out a way to kick them out. I guess Squidward playing the clarinet terribly was kind of funny, but other than that, I didn't care much for it. The ending is also fine, I guess. I mean, it's just Spongebob trying to lure away the jellyfish back to their home. But yeah, this episode is pretty okay. Definitely not one of my favorites. I know some people might find this episode enjoyable with the funny music, but for me personally, it doesn't give this episode much. I personally give this episode a 5 out of 10, putting it above Jellyfishing but below Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy. Hey guys, I'm back with my next review of Spongebob, and it is time for the next episode, Sandy's Rocket. This episode is about how Spongebob finds out about Sandy's trip to the moon and wants to go. When Sandy lets Spongebob go with her, he ends up sneaking into the rocket with Patrick overnight, and when they enter the rocket, they think they landed on the moon, when in reality, they just landed back in Bikini Bottom. When they do so, they think that everyone in town is an alien and capture everyone and put them in the rocket to take them back to what they think is home. Despite how extreme this plot sounds, I actually like how chill this episode is. I don't know why, but the season 1 episodes in particular at night have a really calm essence that I like about it. I think it's because of how the animation style was back then that is what I like about the episode. Other than that, the episode itself is fine. The beginning is a good start to an episode with Spongebob getting hyped to go on a trip with Sandy until Patrick comes and we get into the next part. The next part is also good with Patrick and Spongebob exploring the rocket and even going into space for a little bit before going back down to Bikini Bottom which is conveniently right under the moon. The ending is also fine with Patrick and Spongebob capturing everyone and taking them back to what they think is Bikini Bottom. Overall, this episode is a solid 7 out of 10 going above Naughty Nautical Neighbors but below Ripped Pants. Mm. 
here we are everybody, the next infamous episode of Spongebob. Why is this episode so infamously bad in season 1? Well, people often say that the squeaking in this episode is extremely annoying because of the constant squeaking noise that Spongebob makes from his boots. But what do I think of this episode? We'll find out soon. First off though, the plot is that Mr. Krabs buys these boots for his daughter Pearl. Yes, this is the first episode that introduces Pearl. She ends up hating the boots that Mr. Krabs buys her. Due to not wanting to get rid of them due to being so cheap, Mr. Krabs gives them the Spongebob convincing him that only the world's greatest fry cooks can wear these boots. After the constant annoyance of the squeaking, Mr. Krabs ends up stealing the boots from Spongebob and hiding them to stop the constant squeaking noise. The next day, Mr. Krabs ends up going insane only being able to hear the noise of the boots until he ends up admitting to Spongebob that he hid the boots under the floorboards. After this, he fries and eats the boots and ends up taking a vacation, but he ends up getting the squeaky boots hiccups. Yeah, when your entire episode relies on one constant annoying noise, it's safe to say that the episode isn't going to be great. It's kind of hard to talk about anything else when the entire plot and humor of this episode is Spongebob making an annoying squeaky noise, but I'll try. This episode starts off pretty alright, it's honestly just your basic start to an episode and it's pretty inoffensive to be honest. It's the next part that is when it really starts to get bad. When Spongebob obtains the boots, basically the only thing that happens is that everyone is getting annoyed by the squeaking of Spongebob's boots. Which isn't a good thing, as it also leaves the people watching this episode pretty annoyed. Then the next part is just flat out weird and unhinged, with Mr. Krabs going on a full on paranoia and trying to get rid of the boots. And what follows is one of the weirdest sequences of Mr. Krabs, just hearing the squeaking noise coming out of everybody. Yeah, this part is uh, pretty creepy and not in a good way. This episode overall was just a bad idea in my opinion as the plot was centered around an annoying noise which just doesn't go anywhere. With this, I didn't find this episode too terrible as it's not completely awful, which is why I'm giving it a 3 out of 10 dethroning jellyfish as the worst episode of this season and overall so far. Alright, here we go, the next episode of the show, which is actually known for a certain Patrick face meme. But other than that, this episode is actually said to be pretty mediocre by most people. Do I agree with this opinion though? I guess we'll have to find out. First off, however, what happens in this episode is that Spongebob is tired of his normal, average, everyday life and wants to live in nature with the jellyfish. When he does, Spongebob ends up realizing that he can't survive for more than a night he ends up coming back home and everything goes back to normal. Let's start off with the beginning. This part's okay in my opinion. I do find the Patrick stuff to be heartwarming of how he's the only person saddened by Spongebob's absence as he can't contemplate the fact that Spongebob will obviously come back. The middle is also alright with Sandy and Patrick trying to get Spongebob back and Spongebob trying to live his life amongst the jellyfish. Patrick then tries to capture Spongebob and take him back home. I found this part fine, I know some people overreact to this part, but honestly, it's fine in my opinion. The ending is about how Spongebob misses his life and decides to go back home, which was expected by everyone seeing how he didn't fare well in nature. Overall, this episode is alright, it probably would have been a 5 out of 10, but with the Patrick stuff in this episode being the highlight and a good one at that, I'm gonna give this episode a 6 out of 10. Well. Two not so good episodes in season one in a row. Hopefully the next one will be better. Okay, so it's been a bit since my last SpongeBob review, but I'm back with my next one, which is opposite day. What happens in this episode is that Squidward gets tired of Spongebob and Patrick and decides to sell his house due to the amount of annoyance. The issue is that, because of how annoying Spongebob is, no one is going to want to buy Squidward's house. Squidward finds an issue to this, however, and convinces Spongebob that it's opposite day in order to try to get rid of him. 
This plan ends up backfiring, however, and SpongeBob returns to act like Squidward, and the lady ends up not buying Squidward's house. This episode is extremely loved by SpongeBob fans because of how funny the episode is perceived, but do what, what do I think? Well, first off, I think that this episode is good overall, but not as good as most other people say. The beginning, middle, and end, in my opinion, are all equal to each other, as I think each part represents a good balance of humor throughout the entire episode. The plot, in my opinion, was alright, not the most amazing thing, but it served its purpose for me. The consistency of this episode is pretty good, but not to the, to the point where I think this episode completely stands out compared to other episodes in this season. Each part is just full of tame, but still humorous jokes, with my favorite personally being Patrick pretending to try to act like Squidward. I do like the ending with Squidward chasing Spongebob and Patrick as well to add on. Overall, I give this episode a good 7 out of 10, putting it above Sandy's Rocket, but below Ripped Pants. Hey guys, I'm back with my next Spongebob episode review of this series, and we're going to be reviewing one of the greatest episodes of the season, being Culture Shock. If you were to ask me what Spongebob episode pioneered the humor for this show, I would have said this episode. But before we get into that, let me describe the plot. The plot is that the Krusty Krab hasn't seen a customer in weeks, so in order to try and fix this issue, Squidward comes up with the idea to create a talent show to try and bring culture to Bikini Bottom. What happens is that some of the known characters of Bikini Bottom show off their acts. One by one they go into their talents, with my personal favorite being Gary's. But of course, Squidward gives himself the last talent. His talent, of course, was him dancing on stage with some of the most beautiful dance moves I've ever seen. But the people of Bikini Bottom seem to disagree and boo Squidward off the stage. Of course, Squidward made Spongebob mop the stage, so when Spongebob goes to the stage, the crowd starts to cheer at the sight of Spongebob, and when Squidward even shows an arm, they start to get quiet again. This all leads to the talent show being a success. Let me start this off by saying that this is how you make Squidward the butt of the joke. Throughout the episode, he was acting like a prick to Spongebob, so when he finally gets his time to shine, he ends up getting booed off stage, and it's really well deserved unlike some episodes in the future. Also, when I say this episode made me laugh, I really mean it with the amount of jokes it had. All of it seemed to land for me. Even the really subtle jokes, just like Patrick laughing at Squidward for just talking, I thought was pretty funny. But of course, the highlight of this episode easily has to be the ending. The beginning and middle of this episode is also good. I liked how the people of Bikini Bottom were hyping up this talent show like it was the biggest thing and Spongebob constantly bugging Squidward to be in the show was also good. The ending though was something else. Everything about it was so perfectly timed with how Spongebob is immediately cheered for his talents of mopping the floor and how Squidward does the same thing but is instantly shamed for this. Overall this episode for me is just the perfect episode in terms of humor and this is when the humor started to get better with, Sp with Spongebob. With this, I'm going to give this episode a 9 out of 10, putting it above pickles, but below pizza delivery. Hey guys, I'm back with my next review of Spongebob, and as you can see, I'm going to be reviewing the iconic episode, Fun. What happens in this episode is that Plankton once again tries to steal the Krabby Patty, but, of course, gets stopped by Spongebob. Spongebob then starts to feel bad for Plankton, as he is constantly getting hated on by the people of Bikini Bottom. Plankton then sees this as an opportunity to befriend Spongebob in order to get a Krabby Patty from him. At first, Plankton does think that they're friends, but remembers the ultimate goal of taking a Krabby Patty and attempts to steal it, but in the end gets caught by Mr. Krabs and the plan fails. I think this episode is fine, nothing too great, but not mediocre either. I thought that the fun song was cute and seeing Plankton happy for just a little bit was also nice, and the chemistry between him and Spongebob was definitely the highlight of the episode. Other than that, I didn't think much else about the episode. As a whole, I thought the beginning, middle, and end all tied perfectly together to make a serviceable plot and the jokes weren't bad but also weren't the greatest in the episode. 
Overall, I would give this episode a solid 6 out of 10, putting it above Boating School but below Home Sweet Pineapple. Here I am, once again, to review the next Spongebob episode, which is, in fact, as you can see, Muscle Bob Buff Pants. What happens in this episode is that Spongebob wants to try and get strong, so he has Sandy try and work him out. Sandy ends up taking it to the extreme, making Spongebob quit and instead buying these anchor arms that he sees on TV. These arms make Spongebob look super buff and he starts bragging about his giant arms. Sandy ends up signing up Spongebob for an anchor throwing competition, to which it is revealed his arms are fake. One thing I do wonder is how he flipped the giant fish over when he first revealed his arms and yet he's not able to lift a glass of punch. But then again, this is Spongebob, so what am I expecting? Anyways, my thoughts on this episode is that it's pretty mediocre overall. I don't like it, but I don't dislike it either. Everything about this episode is just overall average. Spongebob gloating about his arms is kind of annoying, but he, when he gets revealed for being fake, he gets a payback for it. I do like the ending with Sandy making Spongebob flipping through all the channels, but other than that, I didn't find anything else about this episode to be great or that disappointing. With that, I'm going to put this or give this episode a 5 out of 10, putting it above Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy, but below Reef Blower. Alright guys, I'm back again, here to bring you my next Spongebob episode review of Squidward the Unfriendly Ghost. What happens in this episode is that Spongebob and Patrick are playing a game, and they end up throwing their show into Squidward's house, where it hits his wax sculpture of himself. This causes them to think that they killed Squidward right after Squidward comes out of the bathroom looking like a ghost. It was baby powder and nothing else, hopefully. This, of course, makes Spongebob and Patrick think that Squidward's ghost has come to haunt him. This makes Squidward make Spongebob and Patrick attend to his every will as they want to be spared. Once they read a comic about the Flying Dutchman, Spongebob and Patrick decide to put Squidward to rest. They end up putting Squidward in a bubble and he gets caught in a flock of seagulls inside of the bubble. I think that this episode has some qualities to it as I thought that Squidward making Spongebob and Patrick do everything he wanted was pretty funny and Squidward gets what he deserves at the end of the episode. I also liked Spongebob and Patrick trying to put him in a coffin, I thought that was pretty funny. The plot overall felt really generic and dry in my opinion and was kind of boring, however the humor did kind of make up for it as I thought most of the jokes were funny. Overall, I personally give this episode a 6 out of 10, putting it above Boating School but below FUN Fun. Hey guys, I'm back with my next Spongebob review, and for some reason, despite coming out in the year 2000, is ordered before some of the 1999 episodes, The Chaperone. What happens in this episode is that Pearl's date to the prom stood her up, and she now has to take somebody else to the dance. Spongebob, of course, is the only person to volunteer and has to come up with an idea, and he makes himself super tall in order to look better for Pearl. When they go to the prom, Spongebob ends up embarrassing her there, and when they try and dance, they ruin the dance for everyone, and Pearl gets upset. This ends up making Spongebob cry, and everyone feels bad for him, so when they make up after 15 seconds, they do the sponge dance. This ends up getting them kicked out. In the end, apparently, and apparently, Spongebob took a clone and went to retrieve it. Yeah, this episode is pretty forgettable to say the least, other than the fact from how weird it is. I don't understand the whole Spongebob clone thing in the end, it felt like they didn't know how to end the episode, so they just decided to do that, and other than that, the rest of this episode is pretty boring. The only thing I remember about this episode was the name Octavius Rex, but yeah, pretty uninteresting episode all around, which is why I'm putting it, or giving it a 5 out of 10, putting it above Jellyfishing and below Jellyfish Jam.
Hey guys, I'm back with my next review of Spongebob. Time to review the Halloween special episode in April. That's pretty cool, but I gotta do what I gotta do. And this is the episode that comes up next in chronological order. What happens in this episode is that it's Halloween night and everybody knows that Spongebob gets the most scared out of any creature in town, so they start to scare Spongebob as a joke. Spongebob, however, gets tired of this and decides to try and scare everybody else. After a couple attempts of failing, Spongebob hatches a great idea to make himself look like a ghost by shaving his, himself round. He then goes to Mr. Krabs' party and pretends to be the Flying Dutchman. Soon after, the real Flying Dutchman comes up and comes to confront Spongebob about his costume, but when he takes it off, he ends up getting scared and so does everybody else as Spongebob shaved off his entire body, leaving only his legs, brain, eyes, and tiny species, pieces of sponge exposed. Honestly, for this first holiday special the show's ever had, it's pretty mediocre. This episode doesn't try to do anything that enhances the plot or tells any jokes that are noteworthy. I think the only joke I slightly smirked at was the one where Squidward asked Sandy what a pet goldfish is supposed to be, but other than that, this episode is pretty bare bones and generic. I'm not saying I dislike the episode, it's just kind of there and I don't really have much else to say outside of what I just said, which is why I'm giving this a 5 out of 10 from what I've seen the next episode's creepier than this one. Oh boy, here we are in what is often considered by many to be the worst episode of Season 1, I Was a Teenage Gary. I mean, when the title card has horror music that sounds like a catastrophe, it probably isn't good. But who knows, maybe my opinion will be different. Anyways, what happens in this episode is that Spongebob and Patrick are going on a jellyfishing trip, and Squidward is tasked to take care of Gary while they're gone. Instead, however, Squidward just slacks off for three days and realizes that he hasn't fed Gary, and he ends up becoming extremely sick due to the lack of food. When Spongebob comes back, they call the doctor, who tells them to inject Gary with snail plasma. Spongebob accidentally gets stabbed with the snail plasma and ends up turning into a snail in a very ugly sequence, and then when he tries to get into Squidward's house, 
he ends up terrorizing Squidward until eventually Squidward accidentally gets stabbed with the snail plasma himself, and then they all start singing in snail on a wall. Yeah, that was a lot to unpack, and honestly, the first part of this episode is okay, although Squidward ignoring Gary is pretty sad, but the next scene when Squidward realizes he hasn't fed him and genuinely feels bad, and the next scene is pretty sweet. However, the last part of this episode is what puts it into infamy. The last part, in my opinion, is weird and in a bad way. Nothing works, and the episode just comes off as completely creepy as the jokes that were attempted to be made in this part don't work as it's just Spongebob chasing Squidward as a snail and everything else being attempted in this scene also comes off as weird, and even without the creepiness aspect of this episode, it's pretty uninteresting all things considered. I do have to agree that this episode is bad, and while yes, it does have a few highlights, overall the ending part just ruins it in comparison to the rest of the episode, which is just alright. Because of this, I'm going to give this episode a 3 out of 10, putting it above squeaky boots but below jellyfishing, as I did find squeaky boots to be slightly more annoying, and both of these episodes have creepiness factors in them. Here it is, one of the most recognizable episodes of Spongebob to date, SB129. What makes this episode memorable though? Well first off, before I dive into my thoughts on this episode, what happens in this episode is that Spongebob and Patrick try and get Squidward to go jellyfishing with them. After constantly being annoyed by their presence, Squidward hides in the Krusty Krab freezer in order to try and get away from them. When they leave, Squidward accidentally locks himself inside the freezer and finally gets out after 2,000 years and is now in the future. He then tries to get back to his current time period. When he attempts to travel to the past, he ends up in a prehistoric area where everything is all primitive, including Spongebob and Patrick. After teaching them how to jellyfish, he then goes back into the time machine and ends up in a weird place where everything is just complete emptiness. This is the most famous scene in the episode and perhaps maybe in the whole show as its weird quirkiness breaks the boundaries even for Spongebob as when Squidward says alone a bunch of text bubbles come up and a bunch of weird noises start to talk. When he finally finds the time machine he finally gets back to his current time of day and everything goes back to normal. Yeah, I must say, even with my description, this doesn't do the episode justice as it's famous for how unique it is. I don't really have much to say, but I'll do my best as words don't, don't really get the full feeling of what this episode does. First off, the scenes with Squidward going into the future and past were both pretty cool, and it's interesting to see these new environments that have their own unique twist. Another thing is that Squidward going through all of these wacky scenarios as honestly, he's the only character that would work for this as his sense of reality comes into play in this episode, which works well in the episode's favor. However, the most iconic part of this episode is the void part. It's just the feeling of when Squidward says alone and all of his t these tiny voices start to appear and Squidward realizing how bad he messed up and just misses everything, even the things that he hates and just wants to go home. This part is truly one of the most creative things ever seen in the show. In my opinion, the only drawback to this episode is that it did feel a little rushed, especially in the future part, and a 22 minute special could have worked better, but still what we got for an 11 minute episode is really good. Which is why I'm going to give this episode an 8 out of 10, putting it above Tea at the Tree Dome, but below Bubble Stand. Alright, here we go. Next episode of Spongebob, Karate Choppers. This episode is the last episode to come out in the 20th century being created on December 31st, 1999, airing right after SB129. But enough about the geeky facts, let's move on to the episode. What happens in this episode is that Spongebob and Sandy are both really into karate and both are extremely competitive with one another. After a constant back and forth of their karate, eventually this takes it to the Krusty Krab where Mr. Krabs finds out about Spongebob's karate antics and orders him to stop doing karate with the threat of being fired. When Spongebob tries to stop Sandy, 
She pops out and tries to do karate with him. This causes Mr. Krabs to think that Spongebob was doing karate, and he ends up almost getting fired due to this. This ends up making them both give up karate. After this, they go to the park and try to make sandwiches, but end up making them while doing karate. This makes them spawn a bunch of sandwiches in, and Mr. Krabs notices this, and instead of firing Spongebob, he sees this as an opportunity to make more money with it ending with one of my favorite Squidward quotes being, I hate all of you, when they were rhyming, rhyming with karate. This episode is pretty good, all things considered. I mean, the plot is good, and in my opinion, this episode is kind of underrated as not many people talk about it when talking about season one. It's probably because it's just not as memorable as most, and I kind of agree with that as I think this episode is good, but it isn't one of the memorable ones. I think that this episode has a whole as a whole is well constructed, has good humor, and a well-developed plot. It's just that it doesn't stick out as much and doesn't do much out of the ordinary. With this, I will be giving this episode a fair 7 out of 10, putting it above fun but below home sweet pineapple. Alright, here it is. If you don't already know the Gary Pickleface Spongebob review lore from two to three years ago, during my season one rankings, I put this as my number one favorite season one episode. But does this opinion still hold true? I guess we're going to have to find out. But first, what happens in this episode is that Spongebob goes to sleep and ends up having a dream where he ends up getting kicked out of his dream and gets teleported into the outside world. This prompts Spongebob to go into his friend's dreams. First, he goes into Gary's dream, who tells Spongebob about how dreams are made and how you can do whatever you want inside of a dream. After, he goes into Patrick's dream, where Patrick is just riding on one of those things that you see in front of the stores. Patrick, of course, isn't very bright, so his dream doesn't go much of anywhere. Next, Spongebob goes into Squidward's dream, where he's performing for the King of England in front of a crowd, and Spongebob drives Squidward to break his clarinet, so he then replaces Squidward clarinet and people start to cheer for them again next he goes into sandy's dream who is dreaming about free falling into a tiny target on the ground sandy instead gets distracted by spongebob and lands and and falls into a pile of clam poop spongebob then goes into pearl's dream where he doesn't spend any time in as he's looking for mr krabs's dream mr krabs is of course dreaming about catching a giant piece of money which spongebob accidentally ends up releasing this sends spongebob into plankton's dream where he is dreaming about destroying the bikini bottom of course and spongebob puts a stop to him he then goes back to his house wh where everyone ends up waiting for him as he was invading their dreams and the episode ends Yes, this episode was a lot to unpack, and it seems like a giant adventure of an episode. And honestly, it is, but for some reason, this episode also maintains the calm feeling that most Season 1 episodes seem to have. What I mean by this is that the overall vibe of the episode feels a lot more laid back as it takes place during the night, and it's honestly a nice change of pace for Spongebob, as usually most episodes are during the day and usually rely on mostly humor. However, even though this episode does lack in humor, it certainly d makes up for in story. I think my summary of this episode should be enough to explain this, but to go in more depth, Spongebob exploring the dreams of all of his friends is pretty interesting, as you can see a side of them that often can't be portrayed in the real world, and it does it in a ma manner that isn't trying to be over the top, but rather fluid and smooth. This episode has always intrigued me by how unique it is as it's something that most people seem to overlook, but for me, it stands out among Spongebob episodes in general. The pacing of this episode is also perfectly balanced, giving enough respective time to each character. My personal favorite dream has to be Gary's as it's interesting seeing the perception of dreams and how it goes about many ways, being the mind having unlimited potential in a dream, and then this showing it and everyone else's dream is pretty creative. Overall, while this episode does lack in the humor department, it doesn't really matter when the other factors of this episode are just this good, and this episode is extremely creative, even for today. And I personally think that the different mini-adventures happening inside of Spongebob's one big long adventure is a nice feeling, which is why I'm going to give this episode a good 10 out of 10 dethroning pizza delivery by a slim margin as the current number one of what I have reviewed so far.
I think both of these episodes are amazing and I had a really hard time choosing which one I liked more, but in the end, I had to give it to Sleepy Time. All right, as we know, SpongeBob is often portrayed as a child in some episodes, and this episode is one that does. But does it do it well? Guess we're going to have to find out. But first, what happens in this episode is that SpongeBob gets the craving for a midnight snack and opens the fridge to make his snack. However, he forgets to close the fridge as he falls asleep in his kitchen, and whenever he wakes up, he feels sick and soon learns that he has the suds, which basically is the flu for sponges. After getting kicked out of work for being sick, Spongebob calls Sandy to help escort him to the doctor's office. Patrick ends up getting to Spongebob's house first and tells Spongebob about the dangers of the doctor's office, and this prompts Spongebob to try and get taken care of by Patrick as he's scared to go to the doctor. They try doing many cures, but this ends up not working, and then Sandy shows up to try and get Spongebob to the doctor. After a few minutes, Spongebob is finally convinced to go and he gets the sponge treatment from them and he finally gets better and Patrick also gets what he deserves in the end. I think that this episode has a good portrayal on the average child's first reaction to going to the doctor. Spongebob in this episode is just as scared and you honestly can't blame him. Patrick on the other hand is kind of annoying in this episode, but it does serve his purpose as to help move the plot along and they're both basically children especially in this episode he also does get what he deserves by the end of the episode which often isn't seen in spongebob episodes so that's a plus i do think that this episode is pretty simple but i think the way that it flows is what carries it it really doesn't try to be too over the top but it isn't just another typical boring story as it adds the right amount of spongebob charm that the episode needs all this leads me to give this episode a 7 out of 10, putting it above Sandy's Rocket, as both episodes are kind of similar, but below or under opposite day. Alright guys, so this time I'm going to be reviewing what I consider to be the worst episode of season 1, which I said was Valentine's Day. Do my opinions still hold true however? Well, you'll find out shortly, but first off, what happens in this episode is that it's Valentine's Day in Bikini Bottom, and Spongebob gives everyone around town gifts, and he plans to give Patrick one big giant gift at the end of the episode. Patrick, however, thinks that Spongebob did not give him a present, as the present is taking so long to be delivered. This causes Patrick to be in a bad mood throughout the episode and causes a giant tantrum through the Glove World Valentine's Carnival as he sees that Spongebob gave everybody a Valentine's present except for him, which is justified. In the end though, Sandy comes to deliver the giant present to Patrick, and after refusing to look back behind him a few times, he finally ends up seeing the present and is satisfied in the end. Honestly, when I labeled this as the worst season 1 episode, I think now I'm wrong. In my original review, I said that Patrick in this episode was pretty insufferable and was acting insanely unjust in this episode, but now I think that Patrick's actions were ju actually justified as he noticed that everyone else in town got a gift from his best friend except him. One giant gripe I still have with this episode, however, is that the ending is pretty bad in my opinion. When Patrick says that the townspeople deserve to give him something that kind of got on my nerves, and Patrick not looking back at first was pretty annoying to be honest, but when Sandy finally delivered the gift to Patrick, I thought that was kind of wholesome and made up for the otherwise pretty awful ending. With a differing opinion now, I'm still going to give this episode a 4 out of 10 as I thought the episode was just alright with the ending being bringing it down just a little and I'm going to put this above jellyfishing but below scaredy pants. Alright, another day, another Spongebob review, and this time will be the paper. What happens in this episode is that Squidward throws out a piece of paper, and Spongebob asks Squidward if he can have the paper, and after constantly asking despite Squidward saying yes, Spongebob finally takes the paper. 
SpongeBob, of course, having the imagination he has, does a lot of things with this paper. From pretending to be a savage beast to making music with the sheet of paper he has, Squidward starts to get jealous about how much fun SpongeBob is having with this piece of paper. Squidward tries to distract himself with the regret with how he gave SpongeBob the piece of paper. Squidward then asks SpongeBob for the paper back, but SpongeBob refuses because of the promise Squidward asked him to have, which was to never give him the paper back, no matter how much how hard he begs and pleads. This leads to Squidward to trade every single one of his belongings for a piece of paper, and Squidward realizes that he traded everything for a piece of paper, as he doesn't have the same imagination that SpongeBob has. Looking back, this episode gives me mixed feelings. I thought the beginning of this episode was pretty obnoxious, as I thought as I thought the joke of SpongeBob asking for the paper wasn't funny in the first place, and it got even more annoying as it went on. It's when SpongeBob actually starts to play with the paper is when the episode starts to get better. I think that the amount of creative things that SpongeBob was able to do with the paper was perfect was a perfect representation of his character as it shows a topic that is commonly seen in the beginning of Spongebob, which is his imagination. I thought the things Spongebob was able to do were pretty funny, and my personal favorite bit was him playing the paper as a clarinet. I think the ending is what tops off the episode really nicely though, as Squidward realizing it's not the actual paper that is fun, but rather what you can do with the paper with the power of imagination, in which Squidward doesn't have, so... I thought that part was pretty clever. Overall, I think this episode started off horribly but slowly started to get better as it continued throughout, so I'm going to give it a 6 out of 10, putting it above Squidward the Unfriendly Ghost but below fun. Yo ho everybody, I'm back with my next review of Spongebob, which is ARG. What happens in this episode is that Spongebob and Patrick invite Mr. Krabs to play a board game with them. The premise of this board game is that you have to get the Flying Dutchman's treasure. Mr. Krabs, of course, being the cheap crustacean he is, loves the game and plays it with Spongebob and Patrick all day until eventually it hits midnight and Mr. Krabs has an obsession with the game and tries to get them to keep playing until Spongebob has to yell at him to go home. The next day, Mr. Krabs invites Spongebob and Patrick to go on a real treasure hunt with him to find the Dutchman's treasure. They start off their journey by crashing into a giant rock, and this ends up making them walk the rest of the journey on foot. First, they go in the wrong direction as Patrick thought east was west, and then they walk the rest of the journey. They end up not finding the treasure during the day and have to set up camp. Spongebob and Patrick sleep outside in the cold while Mustard Krabs stays in his warm tent and Spongebob and Patrick decide to look at the map. The map ends up being the board game map that Mr. Krabs was playing with them, and right after this they find the X of the treasure and Mr. Krabs does not want to share the treasure with Spongebob and Patrick, causing them to summon the Flying Dutchman, and he gives them, he gives Spongebob and Patrick each a gold doubloon and everything ends. I'm going to be honest now, this episode isn't as good as I remembered it to be, as I kind of found it to just be alright overall. The beginning and middle were both just alright and didn't really have anything special added to them, as it was just Spongebob, Patrick, and Mr. Krabs going on a treasure hunt, with nothing really wacky or zany happening, rather just a plain and simple treasure hunt. The ending I thought was a little annoying, however, as Mr. Krabs not wanting to share with Spongebob and Patrick as expected, but still kind of annoying and I never really liked it when this happens, where Mr. Krabs is greedy for no reason even though Spongebob and Patrick do all the work. The Flying Dutchman part, however, I think does make up for the first part of the ending as Mr. Krabs gets what he deserves, so it does kind of balance out with what I thought to be was the worst part of the episode. Overall, I would give this episode a 5 out of 10, putting it above Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy, but below Muscle Bob Buff Pants. Hey guys, I'm back with my next review of Spongebob, and before I go any further, I must say thank you guys for 600 subscribers. I know I forgot to say this in my last video, so thanks for that. Anyways, as you can see, I'm going to be reviewing Rock Bottom, and what happens in this episode is that Spongebob and Patrick just left after a long day at Glove World, 
and they accidentally enter the wrong bus, which takes them to Rock Bottom, which is a mysterious and creepy place where everyone speak there speaks a different dialect where they talk like this. And SpongeBob and Patrick have to take the bus in order to get back to Bikini Bottom. Patrick ends up finding a bus while SpongeBob was away, leaving SpongeBob alone in a, the dark place of Rock Bottom. SpongeBob at first ends up waiting for a long time until eventually he gets hungry and goes to get a snack. This ends up causing a bunch of buses to come and go while SpongeBob attempts to get a snack, and honestly, it's perfectly timed. After waiting for so long after that, SpongeBob eventually tries to find all of the bus schedules that will take him home, and after waiting for so long, he finally gets to the front of the line just to find out the last bus just came, and he would have to wait until the next day to catch another one. This causes SpongeBob to go into the biggest rage I think we'll ever see him go to in, inside of the show, and after this, a fish comes along and helps SpongeBob get back up to Bikini Bottom with his glove balloon, and everything ends well again. This episode is one of the most iconic episodes of this season, and it's easy to understand why. This episode has really good pacing, and it's definitely one of the best paced episodes of the entire show. What I mean by this is that every joke seems to land in this episode, especially in that scene with Spongebob getting the kelp bar. Also, this episode knows when to start and stop a, for each segment, as I thought the balance between each part of the episode was pretty good and it all tied in well with the plot of this episode. Speaking of the plot, I thought it was also pretty good. One gripe I do have is that I kind of felt bad for Spongebob throughout this episode, as I thought he didn't really do anything to deserve what happened to him. But I mean, to contradict this, it worked well with the rest of the episode. I think the plot overall was really good, was a really good idea, as you can never get to see new environments in SpongeBob outside of the typical neighborhood in Krusty Krab. So seeing this new place and having SpongeBob experience these different scary scenarios was also pretty creative. Overall, I would give this episode a good 8 out of 10, putting it above T at the True Dome, but below SB129, as the one gripe I did have with this episode was kind of a detriment to the rest of this episode. Alright everyone, I'm back with my next Spongebob review, and today, as you can see, I'm going to be reviewing Texas. What happens in this episode is that Sandy has a sense of place for her home, which is Texas, and is extremely homesick. She misses her home so much as she feels she doesn't belong in the underwater atmosphere, and decides to move back to Texas. Spongebob and Patrick realize what's happening and have to convince Sandy to try and stay. The idea they get is to host a party that's Texas theme in order to try and get Sandy to stay in Bikini Bottom, as they think if they bring Texas to her, she will stay. But first, they have to try and prevent her from moving and swear to go to the party. They do this by insulting Texas. This causes Sandy to get mad and she starts to chase them in an epic chasing scene where they have to run to the Krusty Krab whilst getting chased by Sandy. Once they manage to get to the Krusty Krab, Sandy sees the surprise that everyone has planned for her, and she realizes that the ultimate lesson is that home is a place where everyone cares about you, and she decides not to move and everything goes back to normal. Okay, so this episode is pretty good overall as I think it has a good combination of humor while also having a good story that actually feels emotional. One thing that definitely sticks out in this episode is the song, as I think it truly shows how homesick Sandy really is about Texas, and it's a pretty good song all things considered. I think that there's almost no bad parts in this episode as well, except for when Patrick went a little too far with the insults, as I thought that that part dragged on for a little bit, but other than that, I didn't have much to complain about this episode. I think that the humor also fits well into the episode as it helps tie in with the plot as I thought that the jokes at the beginning of insulting Texas part were good before Patrick got carried away with it. And I also thought that the townspeople perception on what things such as barbecues and 10 gallon hats really were. I think that the plot is what makes this episode what it is, however, as I think that it's a really sweet story about Sandy wanting to move back, but then when everyone comes together to make sure she, she stays was a nice gesture. Overall, while this episode didn't have anything that made it stick out compared to other episodes, it still held up pretty well with a sweet story and well tied in humor, which is why I'm going to give it an 8 out of 10, putting it above Help Wanted but below T at the Tree Dome.
All right, guys, I'm back with my next review of SpongeBob, and it's been a, almost a week since I've reviewed my last SpongeBob episode, but I might start uploading twice a day now since I have more time on my hands for the most part. But besides that, I'm going to be reviewing my next SpongeBob episode, which is Walking Small. What happens in this episode is that Plankton wants to build a new Chum Bucket restaurant on the beach, but he can't because there are so many people, and he's get too small to get anybody to move. Now I personally think that Plankton's size doesn't affect this, but anyways, because of this he decides to try and get Spongebob to get the beach cleared. He does this by trying to get Spongebob to be more assertive and train Spongebob to be an extremely rude person. First he goes to the guy that took Spongebob's ice cream and Plankton shows Spongebob how to be more aggressive. He then goes to the guy who asks Spongebob to borrow his metal detector and Plankton tries to get Spongebob to say no but ends up failing and Plankton gives up on Spongebob. Spongebob realizes that how he failed Plankton and Plankton gives him a second chance and then Spongebob starts to become the biggest jerk on the beach and starts to drive everybody to leave the beach and an interesting note is that Spongebob calls himself an alpha male in this part which I thought to be funny. But anyways, Spongebob finds out Plankton trained him to be rude to people in order to build his new restaurant and then realizes what he did was wrong and decides to reverse every rude thing that he did and Spongebob then puts Plankton's plan to an end and everything goes back to normal. Interesting note, but this episode has a different ending theme from most other episodes where instead of the classic calm tune, it's replaced by a remix of the intro, but anyways, in my opinion, this episode is pretty balanced overall. I think the episode as a whole ties each part together, and even though I did think that the humor for the most part was a bit lacking, the story made up for it in my opinion. While not the greatest plot in the entire show, I still thought that Spongebob acting differently from how he normally does was pretty interesting and seeing Plankton teach Spongebob the ways of being a terrible person is a good idea and in my opinion the episode executed it fairly well. There isn't much else to say about this episode, however, for me, which is why I'm going to give it a 6 out of 10, putting it above Squidward the Unfriendly Ghost, but below the paper. As aside from the pretty simple but decent plot, there wasn't much to this episode, and it doesn't really stick out or is as entertaining as some of the other episodes. Hey guys, it's Gary here, back at it again with another Spongebob review, and as you can see, I'm going to be reviewing the April Fool's episode at the end of May. So that's pretty goofy if you ask me, but other than that, what happens in this episode is that it's April Fool's Day in Bikini Bottom, which is Spongebob's favorite holiday, which means he's going to play all the jokes he can do to everybody. This being Spongebob, of course, means that he's going to play tiny jokes over everybody in Bikini Bottom, so nothing too extreme. Squidward knows how much Spongebob loves this holiday and he makes Spongebob promise not to pull any pranks on him. This makes Spongebob pull tiny jokes on the people in the Krusty Krab such as only putting one ice cube in the soda and telling somebody that the fork place was actually the spoon place. Spongebob ends up laughing so much to the point where Squidward gets annoyed and ends up making his own prank on Spongebob which is a lot more harsh. Squidward, of course, having a much more crude sense of humor, pulls the prank on Spongebob, which ends up putting him through a lot of pain and everybody leaves after Squidward caused it such a terrible catastrophe of a prank on Spongebob. This causes Squidward to feel terrible and he attempts to form an apology to Spongebob, but this ends up not going as well as he has no idea how to say sorry to him without gagging. After countless trial and error, he ends up being able to say sorry in a manner where he talks about how he loves everybody and Spongebob ends up pranking Squidward in the end by fooling him about pretending to be sad and then Squidward for some reason goes completely insane and the episode just ends. Okay, so this episode is kind of infamous for how unnecessarily cruel Squidward is to Spongebob during the prank part of this episode and yes, even I must admit, for Squidward, that's a little too harsh, but honestly, I did find Spongebob annoying in the beginning of this episode. Not to the point where what happened to him would have been justified, but I still didn't think that this part of the episode was that good. I do think that the ending does kind of make up for what happened in this episode in the beginning and middle, with Squidward having to form an apology, as I thought that this part perfectly reflected his character about how he hates having to form a proper apology to Spongebob, but in any good conscience can't ignore the fact that what he did was insanely cruel. 
Personally, this side of Squidward is something that when it is explored, it can make for a good episode, but unfortunately, it's only really in the ending part of this episode, which I thought to be the only good part, as the beginning was annoying and the middle was just cruel, which is why I'm going to give this episode a 4 out of 10, putting it under jellyfishing, but above I was a teenage Gary. Hey guys, I'm back with my next review of Spongebob, and as you can see, I'm going to be reviewing Neptune's Spatula, if you can tell by the title or title card on the screen as of current. What happens in this episode is that Spongebob and Patrick visit a museum which holds Neptune's Spatula, and it's said that the one who pulls the spatula from the grease will become Neptune's royal fry cook. Spongebob, of course, being the amazing fry cook he is, ends up pulling the spatula from the grease. This summons King Neptune in his first ever appearance inside of the show, who tries to figure out who pulled the spatula from the grease. King Neptune doesn't think that Spongebob pulled the spatula as he seems to be too puny and putrid to be the royal fry cook. After thinking that everyone's playing a joke on him by saying Spongebob pulled the spatula, he challenges Spongebob to a royal cook-off to see who can create the best patty. As they arrive inside the, the Poseidon to see who can create the greatest patty, Neptune seems to be the clear winner at first with his plethora of patties that he has managed to create rather fast compared to Spongebob's one patty that he made in the time with all his love and care. Neptune's patties, however, end up tasting terrible as his magical powers were not made to create patties and Spongebob's one patty was so good that Neptune decides to make him the royal fry cook. Spongebob, however, doesn't want to leave his home, and instead, Neptune goes to the Krusty Krab and is trained by Spongebob to try and create the perfect patty that he had during the cook-off. I personally think that this episode tells a good story, and I think the message that it gets across is also extremely easy for the viewers at home to understand, which is that the quality of passion that comes from inside the heart will always be the quantity of something that is mass-produced, or in simpler terms, quality over quantity will always win. I also like how Neptune's character is portrayed inside of this episode as some egotisk who's clearly disconnected from the people of modern civilization and only cares about winning and beating everyone else who tries to compete with him, and seeing this play out in the story works really well. I like how even though Neptune presents himself as the top man, he gets defeated by just a humble local who's just in it for the passion and Neptune finally realizes his mistake and learn, tries to learn from that and everything ends up pretty nicely. I also did like the joke with Tom Kenny in the shower but other than that the humor was kind of lacking and I also thought that the beginning of the episode dragged on for a bit too long when Neptune thinking people were playing a joke on him as that got kind of old quickly but other than that the episode has a good moral and it's stuff like this which makes season, season 1 different from the rest of the seasons which is why I'm giving this episode a 7 out of 10 putting it above Sandy's rocket but below Suds. Hey guys, Gary Pickleface here telling you his opinion on the next Spongebob episode here, and Hookie is that episode that is up next. What happens in this episode is that it's fishing season, which causes there to be a lot of hooks in the area, which causes Mr. Krabs to go crazy when he enters the Krusty Krab, and tells Spongebob the dangers of the hooks and how you should never go near them, as they can capture and kill you. At first, Spongebob listens to him and continues doing his job at the Krusty Krab. Patrick, however, comes along and convinces Spongebob to play hooky and go to the, with him to the carnival. Spongebob agrees, but then notices that the carnival he went to play hooky for ended up being full of the hooks that Mr. Krabs warned him about. Interesting note, but Patrick mentions that there was a little boy playing with the hooks and he disappeared, which I'm pretty sure is the first time somebody has canonically died in Spongebob. But anyways, at first Spongebob gets all frightened and at the sight of the, these hooks, but after seeing Patrick go on one and fall back down safely, but also in a fun way, it made him want to try to play with the hooks as well. Back at the Krusty Krab, Squidward has to take over Spongebob's job and does terribly at it of course, which causes Mr. Krabs to wonder where Spongebob is as there are no breaks allowed in the Krusty Krab. Mr. Krabs ends up catching Spongebob playing with the hooks that he told him not to go to and makes Spongebob and Patrick promise never to play with the hooks again. The next day Spongebob encounters a hook 
and with his childlike temptations, he ends up playing with it, and after that, he gets hooked. He tries to tell Mr. Krabs that he's been hooked, and Mr. Krabs says that the only thing he can do is take off his clothes, but SpongeBob refuses as he doesn't want to get embarrassed in front of these girls inside of the Krusty Krab. But the hook reels him in so bad, it causes SpongeBob to splatter all over the Krusty Krab door, and it turns out Squidward and Mr. Krabs planned that all along, and SpongeBob learns his lesson in the end. I think this episode, just like the last one, tells a nice story with a good moral behind it. This time being about how you shouldn't let your friends or intrusive thoughts get the best of you and end up making you do things that could be, in fact be life-threatening. My favorite part especially being when Spongebob's intrusive thoughts win over him and he decides to play with the final hook which ends up catching him and leads him to some sort of trauma for him, which is a good way of portraying what can happen in real life as sometimes thoughts can win over everything else, which leads to severe consequences. I also really like Mr. Krabs in this episode as while he is still kind of a cheapskate in this episode, his care for Spongebob wins over in this episode and I think it's nice that him and Squidward both teamed up to help teach Spongebob a lesson at in the end of the episode. One person I didn't like however was Patrick as well yes his role was to be the friend who would persuade Spongebob into doing stupid stuff, I did find him kind of annoying at points where it wasn't necessary such as the part where he tries to convince Spongebob to play with the hooks even after the promise and Patrick ends up being canned tuna in the end which is deserved and makes up for that. Besides the moral I think that this episode overall tells a good story and has pretty tame humor overall. With the jokes not being as excessive in this episode as the message and storytelling was something that the writers wanted to give off in this episode, which is respectable and I also thought that the part with the fisherman was pretty unique as I'm pretty sure Spongebob has never shown people actually in the episodes as this was made before Patchy the Pirate. But other than that, I would give this episode an 8 out of 10 putting it above Texas but below T at the Tree Dome. Alright ladies and gentlemen, here it is, the final episode of Spongebob Season 1. Did this episode end off the season on a high note or no? I guess we'll have to find out, but first, what happens in this episode is that the beloved characters Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy have returned and Spongebob entered a competition to win the conch signal of Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy by making life-size Krabby Patty mannequins of the duo, and of course he wins, so Spongebob receives his reward of the conch signal. Spongebob of course blows the conch signal which alerts Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy that there might be danger around the area and they spring into action and go over to Spongebob's house in order to see the danger. Eventually when they pull up they realize that Spongebob didn't have any danger and just wanted to signal them so Barnacle Boy warns him to only blow the signal when he senses danger. Spongebob of course being the oblivious yet obsessive fanboy he is uses the signal to blow on even the slightest bit of nuisances and this causes Barnacle Boy to take the conch signal from him. Spongebob of course gets upset as he just wanted to spend time with his heroes even though he doesn't realize what he's doing is completely wrong but even then Mermaid Man invites him to help him and Barnacle Boy patrol the town of any danger. Spongebob of course just causes them more trouble throughout the day as he does things such as accidentally knock them off a building and he also harasses a retired villain which ends up giving Barnacle Boy a third degree burn. Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy of course get tired of Spongebob so they ditch him at a restaurant but as soon as they do the Dirty Bubble, one of the main antagonists in Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy, attacks them so when they call for help Spongebob comes up and when he tries to get an autograph from the Dirty Bubble he ends up popping him and saves Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy and in the end they all become friends. Honestly to end off the start of the first season for one of the greatest shows ever it's not that good. The episode by no means are is bad or anything, it's just like I feel this episode was made to show the return of two iconic characters of the show and it doesn't do it in a great way. For one, Spongebob in this episode is pretty annoying as he's completely oblivious to the world around him, which yes I know is one of his character traits in the show, but it doesn't work or isn't funny in this episode. The episode tries to use Spongebob's unawareness as jokes in the episode and it doesn't come off as funny, it just comes off as rather annoying as he's just causing pain to his two favorite heroes which doesn't make any sense because usually Spongebob in earlier seasons could just sense people's emotions and try to cheer them up but here he just acts like a child not getting what they want and he just comes off as entitled in this episode. 
Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy are good in this episode, however, as I think that they play their characters of retired superheroes who still have fighting spirit in them pretty well, and I especially like Barnacle Alright, so this is just going to be a quick video discussing the statistics of how I rated each Spongebob episode. So yeah, going into the statistics, we have two episodes, which I gave a three, being I Was a Teenage Gary and Squeaky Boots. I had um, four episodes, which I gave a four, being Valentine's Day, Murmur Man and Barnacle Boy, two, Jellyfishing and Fools in April. I gave seven episodes of five, those being Reef Blower, Muscle Bob Buff Pants, Arg, Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy one, Jellyfish Jam, The Chaperone, and Scaredy Pants. I gave six episodes the rating of six, those being Fun, The Paper, Walking Small, Squidward the Unfriendly Ghost, Boating School, and Nature Pants. I gave ten episodes of seven, those being Ripped Pants, Opposite Day, Suds, Neptune Spatula, Sandy's Rocket, Naughty Nautical Neighbors, Plankton, Hall Monitor, Home Sweet Pineapple, and Karate Choppers. I gave 6 episodes an 8 out of 10, those being SB129, Rock Bottom, T at the Tree Dome, Hookie, Texas, and Help Wanted. I gave 4 episodes a 9, those being Culture Shock, Pickles, Employee of the Month, and Bubble Stand. And lastly, I gave 2 episodes a 10, of those being Sleepy Time and Pizza Delivery. Doing the math for all of this, it would average out the season to be around a 6.5, which might sound bad, but I personally like this season and I would give it more around a 7 out of 10 than a 6.5 out of 10, as the rankings are alone are just numbers that can spread out more when you look into it, as the 3 out of 10s weren't low 3s and the 2 10 out of 10s were extremely good episodes, so yeah, short video and bye.